You know, it's come to my attention just how many new starters there have been to air guns and shooting during this whole Covid situation and lockdown. And boy, some of these guys are so confused around what it's all about and what they really need. Hello and welcome to AAR On Air and today I will be taking a bit of a look at what is needed to start up a new air gunning hobby. As always on any of the beginner's guides this is aimed at the new starters or even returning shooters who have been away for decades and don't realise what is available these days. To the more experienced shooters, well, hopefully you can add to the comments to help the new guys along and maybe I can show you a thing or two that is going to be of interest to you as well. Like most sports, there is an underlying community around air guns. Some of them are simply there to boast about their latest and most expensive just released gun that they've bought and others are genuinely interested in helping new guys into the sport. I suppose the first thing to highlight is what are the restrictions. Now to our cousins and friends outside the UK, your rules are likely to be somewhat different. But here in the UK, Scotland being somewhat different as well, the rule is basically you need to be over 18 to buy one and have no restrictions applied to you then you are pretty much free to buy a sub 12 foot pound air rifle or and a sub 6 foot pound air pistol. There are no caliber restrictions and no license is required. Currently, if however you want anything more powerful, then you're going to need a firearm certificate from your local plod and to get one, you'll need a justifiable reason. You can't just ask for a 100 foot pound .30 cal rifle to plink at tin cans on your flat's balcony. And to be fair, if you've only got a balcony on a flat and nowhere else to shoot, you should ask yourself if it's sensible to even buy an air rifle of any power at all. Why would anyone buy an air gun? Well, why would anyone buy a performance car or a set of golf sticks? a motorbike or even a push bike for that matter, it is likely to work out quite expensive. But it is something they get pleasure from and in most instances gets them from in front of the reality infested TV programmes and out into the fresh air, mixing with other like-minded individuals or it can simply be a solitary peaceful pastime. Yes, but air guns are dangerous. Have you ever been hit with a golf ball at speed? How many people are killed in motoring accidents? And, well, the whole push bike thing will start off an argument that is likely to run and run. I'm going to love to see the comments on that particular topic. Keep them clean, guys. Keep them clean. Statistically, road traffic fatalities in the UK average around 24,000 per year. In direct contrast, there is on average one air gun fatality during that same time period. And often this is a suicide, believe it or not. Stati Statistically speaking, you are twice as likely to be killed by a lightning strike in the UK than an air gun. Some statistics there for your anti-shooting mates down the pub. So why would you buy an air gun then, is the question. This is where the answers are both varied and numerous. You see, there are so many disciplines in shooting and they range from plinking in your back garden to important pest control to protect foodstuffs and crops to target work over various distances and conditions. Then there is even just for the pure ownership pleasure. I would say that mostly it's around the peaceful quality time that can be spent improving your marksmanship, putting holes in paper. I unashamedly admit to being one of those individuals as 95% of my shooting is done over distances trying to get tighter and tighter groups in paper. 
I'd love to start up the hobby, but it will disturb my neighbours. If you buy the right equipment with the right silencer, they really won't hear you. Some of the silencers these days are really, really quiet and you don't have to spend a lot of money. Whilst we're talking about neighbours, it's vital that you do consider other people and think about backstops and what is behind the target you're shooting at. If you do only have a small back garden and your garden looks straight into your neighbour's windows, then look up some local clubs and shoot there instead. What gun should I have? And it's going to cost a fortune, isn't it? Well, like most sports, the amount you spend is up to you and your budget. Needless to say, it's likely to be a lot less expensive than some other pastimes that I've mentioned already. Considerably less. But it's all the other stuff you need that goes with it that's going to cost the money. Like I've already said, you can spend a considerable amount of money on any hobby, and shooting is no different. But you can set yourself up with a new low cost brake barrel setup for around £140. Get yourself a tin of £10 pellets and you're away. Try setting yourself up in golf gear for that money. Oh, and it's only around the price of a tank of fuel for your fancy sports car. At this point, I could settle down for about an hour's programme to go through all the different types of guns available and how each one works. I have on the channel made several beginner's guide programmes around the various types, so I will only do a brief overview this time. And if you want to know more, then take a look at some of the other programmes. So as to what setup do I need, let's take a look, shall we? A decent gun shop worth its salt should spare you sufficient time to explain what is likely to suit your needs. And if they're not prepared to spend some time explaining things to you, go and find another one that will. And one who knows what they're talking about. If you're asking which is the best air gun for you, please do have a realistic budget in mind before you go in. As I've already said, you can pick up a fairly decent starter gun for not a lot of money. You can, of course, pick them up for even less than the amount that I've already said, but you're increasing the chances of having issues and problems most likely. So beware of the really cheap stuff. Second hand? Well, again, you may hit lucky or you may well get your fingers burned. Let's look at certain price points and types, shall we? Looking at rifles, first of all, these are the most accurate as opposed to pistols and will give you better results and make you feel more like some kick-ass sniper. And of course, the power output is higher if you need to do a spot of pest control, that is. The cheapest way into the sport is to go down the brake barrel route. This is often a simple spring that is pulled back, ready to be released by the trigger, and then it will push the pellet out through the barrel towards the intended target. And like I've said, all you're likely to need to start off with this sort is just a tin of pellets. In basic form, these will simply come with open sights, front and rear. Hopefully adjustable. Some will include a scope in the kit and will give you a magnified image with crosshairs to aim with. Depending on the quality, this could be adjustable to get it set to your eyes and distances. Well, if it's that easy, why does anyone buy anything more expensive? The answer to that one is quality and accuracy, really. You see, as brilliant and cost-effective as springers are, they move when that spring is released. And this means you need to get used to that, and practice is really the only way of doing it. Now, I know I'm about to throw myself to the dogs here, but a pre-charged rifle is less prone to this movement, and as a result is often more accurate in the hands of a less experienced shooter. But I'll come on to that a little later. 
The other thing that is going to be a compromise with a budget kit is that scope. They aren't going to give you some side focus, first focal plane, high magnification zoom item. Well, that's heavier than that. <laughs> More often than not, it will be an ultra budget, more plastic than metal, fixed focus and fixed magnification. So this creates issues such as parallax problems and will be subsequently less accurate. Again, I've done all kinds of programs around these points on the channel. Hopefully you're starting to see why people spend a little bit more money on their starter gun if they feel they want to get into this as a future sport, always assuming, of course, that they can afford it. So, what else is there? You could continue down the Springer type route, route and spend more to get a better barrel and mechanism, or spend more on your scope, etc. But you will still need to be aware that it will still have that element of kick to it, which some people love. The alternatives are CO2 powered, precharged, pneumatic or PCP as they are known. The CO2 is an option that is powered by interchangeable and replaceable air canisters, usually in 12 gram or 88 gram version. This will give you differing amounts of shots available to you depending on the power output of the gun and the size of the fitted CO2 cartridge. Naturally, a 12 gram won't give you as many shots as the 88 gram version. To give you an idea, a 10 foot pound gun is likely to give you around 200 shots from an 88 gram CO2 canister. Naturally, you're gonna get considerably less from a 12 gram one at the same power levels. But the CO2s are not particularly cheap unless of course you buy them in bulk. They are of course susceptible to temperature changes and power output is likely to be lower in colder conditions or climates. Recently I tested the Webley Nemesis X and this was a real hoot, brilliantly accurate and starts at around 175 pound, plus your other bits and bobs and it's likely to cost you around another 100 to 150 pound to get you fully set up. This will of course give you a multi-shot magazine rather than the single shot loading of the Springer. Also giving you more fun faster. And of course, there is no kick to it. If in fact that's what you want. This one does have a more military look to it than the traditional rifle, but both Springers and CO2s are available in either guise depending on personal preference. <laughs> As you can see, going away from the Springer does incur more expense, but gives you more advantages and maybe a few disadvantages along the way too. Next option is the PCP. This is the more expensive route, but you don't have to break the bank to get hold of a decent setup. These usually don't have open sights fitted and will need a scope of some description. And as I've already said, spending some money on a decent scope will pay dividends in the accuracy department, as well as the overall enjoyment of your new hobby. You're really going to need to budget for around £500-ish. For this money, you can get a very accurate rifle with good quality scope and most other bits and bobs you may need to get you going. At this point, let's just clarify what a PCP is and what it does, shall we? It has a cylinder built into the gun and will release a set amount of air each time you cock it and fire it. And you can get anywhere between 50 and 500 shots per fill depending upon the power output and the size of the cylinder on the gun. Of course, you're going to need to get air into the gun to charge it up to be able to go shooting. There are effectively three options here. Firstly, the lowest cost option is the pump. At this point, it's worth highlighting this is not a simple bicycle pump because these things will need around 200 bar of pressure and a cycle pump is not capable of getting even close to this level of output. So, 
a PCP specific pump is required and the price of these can go from around £50 to the sky's the limit really depending on the quality and ease of pumping and well fancy brand names whichever you choose it's going to take some effort and if you're more mature or of slighter build you, or maybe even have health issues my advice will be to choose a different option such as a tank these come in all different sizes and materials from 3 litres right up to 12 litres. Naturally, the bigger it is, the more air it holds and the more fills you will get from it, along with a hernia trying to lift it if it's a larger one. They are usually made of metal and are built to hold 300 bar of pressure, so treat them with a little respect. They also need checking every five years to make sure they're still safe to hold that level of pressure. If you want to go down the lighter route, then you want one of these. This is my carbon fibre tank and is very light and easy to carry around. And it's only around £100 more expensive than the steel one. Well worth it if you can afford it. These will need filling up from time to time at a quality gun shop or maybe a diver's shop and should be no more than around £5 per time per fill up. This should give you several hundreds of shots per tank fill and will cost more in fuel probably to go to the shop than the fill itself is most likely to cost. Alternatively, if you're going to be shooting a lot, then get yourself a compressor. I've tested several over the years and I've had a couple of two and a half thousand pound versions break on me. The best I've found for reliability and superb backup service is the Hill EC3000. Now that's going to set you back about £850, so it's not for the budget shooters. And is best bought usually with a mate and share its use and you can also top your tanks up with it. Again, this is a specific high power compressor and your spray compressor lying around in the garage won't even come close to the pressures that are required. There are some great alternatives such as the BSA dual voltage version which is capable of filling direct to the gun rather than topping up tanks and will even run off your car's 12 volt battery. Oh, and it's going to cost you around £550. Again, not cheap but not as expensive as others and over time will save you that trip to casualty clutching your chest or at very least save you needing to go to get your tank refilled. You're starting to see that PCPs can cost quite a few quid but please don't go off thinking you need to spend this to get started. Such as the Gamo GX40 kit will get you into the sport and it's accurate, ridiculously so, and in the right hands can make some of the top trump boys with their two and a half thousand pound guns look really silly. So why do people spend that kind of money if £500 will get you all you need? The simple answer is, they can afford it. They're looking for higher engineering, excellent, different finishes to their guns. I suppose a more expensive gun is like a high-end sports car. The performance and fit and finish is just, well, better. But they're all capable of getting you a speeding ticket. It's always a case of diminishing returns. Five times more expensive is not necessarily five times better. And 12 foot pounds is 12 foot pounds in either type of gun, of course. I own lower cost guns and the higher end, more expensive ones. And I can sometimes have just as much fun and get just as much enjoyment out of the cheaper ones. The other argument that starts is calibre. What calibre is best? This is really down to what you want to use the gun for 
and over what kinds of distances. For longer range target work, it is usually best to go for a 177 if you're looking at a sub 12 foot pound rifle. This will allow the lighter, smaller pellet to travel faster and have a flatter, more accurate trajectory over varying distances. And as such will help complement the new shooter. If you're more likely to use it for close shooting of pests, then the 22 caliber will have a heavier weight to the pellet and more hitting power at point of impact. I suppose the middle ground is to have the lesser available 0.20 caliber, and as you would expect, it's a balance between the other two. But sadly, the choice of ammunition is quite restricted and hence less popular. In sub 12 foot pound power, you could stretch out to a gun of a 0.25 caliber. And whilst the pellet weight is even heavier to help maximize the power at point of impact, the usable accurate distance is considerably less in this power category. Add into the mix people's personal preferences, but the above is what I would recommend from my personal experiences. You could, of course, go up in power levels, but you'll need to apply for a firearms certificate, or FAC as it's known here. And you will need a justifiable reason for them to grant you one. This is simply proving to them you have a need and space to accommodate a more powerful gun. Be that land you shoot on, or maybe you intend to shoot at a gun range that allows higher power guns. Don't be surprised if they apply certain restrictions to you initially. In Scotland, you need a license for any power level now. So as previously stated, check the laws of your land before you go out and try to buy a gun. Again, a gunsmith worth his salt will explain all this to you. Whilst we're talking about where to shoot, I wished I had a pound for every time I've seen people walk into a gun shop to buy a gun with the intention of going down the local public park to shoot it. Or they intend carrying it about their person as some form of self-defence. Or use it to sort out next door's annoying cat. All of these activities are likely to get you a free stay at Her Majesty's pleasure and possibly for quite a while, so please don't. The next thing to cover off is fun. Now, some people don't like the word fun to be associated with guns or shooting, probably preferring the word pleasure or something. But shooting can be fun and can be a sole activity or within groups or families and so on. Enjoying yourself while shooting is what it's all about for me. And if I'm not enjoying it, then I'm either doing something wrong or I should go off and do something else for a while. It is a sport where you can't cheat as well. You've either hit what you are aiming at or you haven't. Of course, if you're the kind of person who is looking for a way to cheat, then I suppose you'll do that, whatever sport you choose. Buying a decent gun should last you years and years. Be warned, if you get hooked, and most likely you will, be prepared to keep putting your hand in your pocket, initially to keep trying different ammunition, and then moving on to upgrade your equipment. The worst type out there are the ones who buy a gun and love it, but then crave for another one, not wishing to get rid of any of their existing guns, slowly building up quite a collection. And that is exactly the category that I fall squarely into. I do believe you can get therapy for it. Maybe. I haven't even looked at pistols yet, but maybe that can be for another time. Hopefully, this will have helped some of the new starters to the sport. Please check out the channel for more information on the different types. There are loads of programs out there to help you. Feel free to drop any comments below or join some of the forums to get the benefit of the more experienced shooter's knowledge. Give us a thumbs up please, it helps the channel, and subscribe and hit the old alarm bell. I realise this isn't the full definitive answer to everything air guns, but hopefully it has whetted your appetite to find out a little more. 
As always, thanks to Vector Air for the loan of these guns. If you want to know more, drop into them. They will be happy to talk it through with you. And who knows, you may occasionally find me down there and you can pick my brains too. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and shoot safe. And hopefully I'll see you next week. Bye for now.